Do you want what you have written to be remembered long after it has been published? The secret to that is writing characters that are unforgettable. Now, I want to put a caveat right out there that there are, you know, action adventure books that, um, you know, they're not character based, they're plot based, they're plot driven. I'm talking mainly about uh, books that are character driven and they don't have to be one or the other. I think the best books are actually a, a combination of both. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to make your characters unforgettable and whatever you're writing unforgettable. Hi, I'm Dada Groover with The Inspired Writer. Have you ever read something or watched a movie and it just stayed with you? It doesn't matter if it was a classic, something that was written decades ago, or a movie that was produced. It could be The Wizard of Oz. That was in the 30s. And, all right, you know, I think the, the story is exciting, but the characters are what make that movie. What, why it stays with us and why it keeps getting replayed generation after generation. I want to talk about what makes those characters in movies, in plays, and in books unforgettable. And don't forget to click subscribe, ring that little bell, and you will get notifications of the videos that come out. And if you like this video, click like, please. It's not rocket science. If you like it, you click like. Thank you. So what does make a character unforgettable? I want to give as an example, there was a movie made in the mid-90s. It was Natalie Portman's first movie, by the way. She was, oh, I don't know, 12, 13, something like that. It's called The Professional. And, you know, it was, I don't know if it was a fantastic movie, but I remember it being pretty good. And what really stuck out was the way they wrote in the characters. So Luc Besson was the uh, director of that movie. And um, who played the good guy? Uh, Jean... I can't remember his last name. Famous actor. French-born actor. Anyway, uh, the, the movie was, I believe remembered by me because of these unforgettable characters. And uh, Gary Oldman, I do remember his last name, Gary Oldman played the bad guy. And there are going to be some spoilers here. I do recommend you watch the movie in any case. It will really give you some insight as to characterizations. Um, so Gary Oldman, he plays this bad guy. He's a DEA who's corrupt and he's involved in drugs. He kills people. And he's really bad. He's the antagonist. He kills Natalie Portman's family in the very beginning. And, and she takes shelter of this neighbor, this guy, Jean. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I can't remember his last name. Anyway, she takes shelter of this neighbor. And he, he's very reluctant. He doesn't want to do that. Now, he is the hero, right? So, but he's also a hitman. Right? He kills people for a living. He's the professional that the movie's referring to. And so he does some very bad things. He kills people. He's also, he takes care of plants, right? So there's, there's some positive thing there. And he's taken in this young girl whose family has been murdered by this, by this very corrupt guy. And the corrupt guy, so the guy who's play, being played by Gary Oldman, he is, uh, he's really bad, but he's got some really positive traits. So specifically, he is really into classical music. He listens to classical music and just he lets it move him. It's not just he kind of listens to it on the side. He lets it move him. He lets it inspire him. So you have these characters, the good guy, he's, he's actually pretty bad, right? He kills people for a living. And the bad guy, he's got this really positive trait. And he's got other positive traits as well. 
And what I believe this does in general, this whole concept of making characters well-rounded, it makes them very unforgettable. It makes them very realistic because guess what? Every single one of us has positive and negative qualities. You might not be a professional hitman or woman. You're probably not, but you know, may be. And you might not you know, let classical music completely inspire you and move you. Or you might not take in a, a, a neighbor's kid who's been recently orphaned or whatever. It doesn't have to be that extreme. But the characters are really important to make them colorful and very widely um, nuanced. I want to say something before we get too far in here that this is going to apply to fiction, this is going to apply to nonfiction how to, and also to memoir. So, a lot of times when I talk about things like characters, people assume I am talking about fiction, but not necessarily. Not necessarily. And in memoir, right, I've met, I've read memoir where people how to say this, how can I say this nicely, where people kind of portray themselves as a perfect person. And I just don't agree with that. I just don't agree with that because guess what? No one's perfect. Same thing I do. I have spent many years training speakers. I've trained some of the best speakers in the world. I really have. And I love that work as well as I do training writers. And you know, I've seen a lot of speakers that try to be perfect on stage and it just, it does not come across as well. Let people see your flaws and let people see your character's flaws. Let people see your flaws if you're writing a memoir. One example I can give you of that is Andre Agassi, the famous tennis player, world-class tennis player, who wrote this book, Open. That's his uh, memoir. And it is fantastic. J.R. Moringer, who is a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, helped him write it. He gave him a lot of support. Uh, he gave him a lot of support. Yeah, he helped him write the book. They came out with this book, this memoir about his life that reads like really excellent fiction. And I think one of the ways it's so good is because his, his portrayal of himself as a flawed human being and yeah, he's had success, and, and the reasons for his success, it's just an inspiring book. If you hadn't read it yet, get open, give it a read, and see what I'm talking about. And plus, it's just a very, very enjoyable read. It's all about those characterizations. Whatever kind of book you're writing, how-to nonfiction. Oh, and I hear people saying all the time, well, you, well, it doesn't have characters in it. It should. How to nonfiction. Say you're writing a book on how to be, whatever, okay, how to be a better auto mechanic. And if you're writing a book like that, then you're going to want to have anecdotes about your own life as an auto mechanic or others, somebody you're related to or new or whatever, stories about auto mechanics. And again, they need to be flawed individuals. That is what is going to get people's attention. That is going to make them remember what you've written. And it's also going to make them feel. If people can relate to the characters in your book, they will feel. Now, this can also be achieved by writing really good dialogue. Writing good dialogue is important. The dialogue should be realistic. Not realistic in the sense that it exa is exactly like people talk in the real world because people say um a lot. They say ah. Uh, they might repeat themselves. They speak in fragments. And if you write like that in the book, it will not be as good. It won't. You'll lose people. They will... Their attention will go somewhere else. They'll just, they'll just put it down. Even though it's extremely realistic. It might be extremely realistic. So dialogue needs to be adjusted to sound realistic, but not necessarily be verbatim what people would actually say. And through dialogue, you can discover a lot about a character. Same thing. So with memoir, it, when you write memoir, it can be 
uh, very exciting if you bring people in. You let them see the dialogue that was going on. You could say, and I went to school and I had this fight with my professor of sociology and this happened and whatever. Or you could actually give the excerpt, excerpt, I said it right the second time, excerpt of the, of the dialogue that actually happened between you. So again, this, this applies to all different kinds of writing. Of, and I'm talking about writing of long books specifically, not so much email this time because you don't have room. You don't have time to do in-depth characterizations. But by showing a, uh, uh, these flawed characters, well, I want to say short stories too can apply to this. This can definitely be applied to short stories because with short stories, you have a very quick time to give the characterizations. You don't have as much time, you can't go as much into depth, but you want to at least give the impression that this character is a real person, has real wants, real desires, real relationships, and I believe the only way you're going to do that is if you show those flaws, you show both sides of it. Have you ever seen a movie or read a book or, or watched a play where one of the characters is perfect? I see these all the time. I see, I'm like, wow, why are they doing this? And the main person will be this perfect uh, personality and they might be a victim of this or a victim of that, but they don't have flaws, like real flaws. Like again, in the professional, uh, Jean, Jean Reno, Jean Reno, of course, there is his. Uh, Jean Reno, uh, he is an assassin. <laughs> he's an assassin, but he's a good guy. He's got a good heart. He takes this, this little girl in and he takes care of his plants and he's, he's just got this great side to him. So, knowing the difference between a paper-thin, two-dimensional character and a character that really feels real is important. And it's important to put these in your book. Now, if you have a character who is, say, she's supposed to be a good person and there's too many flaws, that can go the other way because you want to have... I don't want to sound too binary here, but you want to have a figure out if, it, if this is a good character or a bad character. Most of the time, you can write an incredible book with somebody who is really ambiguous. Was this character good? Was this character bad? Another uh, movie that I have mentioned before in other videos, As Good As It Gets, with Jack Nicholson. He plays this scoundrel, right? He plays this guy. He, In the first five minutes of the movie, he drops the neighbor's dog down the garbage chute of the apartment building. Yeah. He's a bad guy, and he's rude, he's nasty to people, he's uh, homophobic to the extent where he's uh, abusive and offensive to his neighbors and to everyone. He's just, you know, he's just got so many bad qualities, and then slowly over the course of the movie, uh, the good qualities come out. So you not only have that balance, you have the character arc, which which shows him improving. People love to see that character arc. That is another very important part of creating an unforgettable character. If you forget, if you forget, if you create, if you create an unforgettable character, it will, like I said in the beginning, it will make your work unforgettable as well. And part of it is just having that intent. I don't want my characters to appear perfect. Yes, you want your characters to appear likable. Like, in, again, in the example of the professional, right? Jean Reno, he takes in the little girl, right? Very early in the movie. And that makes him likable. That makes him likable. He does not want to. That's the other thing. He knows what he does for a living. And plus, he's, you know, he, he's, he loves his taking care of his plants. He does not want to bring, uh, he does not want to let this little girl into his life. So there you have it. I hope this was useful for you. If you like the video, please click like and click that subscribe button, ring that little bell. I know I'm asking a lot, but I would love it if you did that. 
This has been Dada Groover, and thank you so much for being here today.